Hello and welcome to Put Our Continue Pub News this week. Denner Deal. <laughs> the Denner Deal. The Denner, Dun, it's like Dun Deal, but Denner Den, Deal. Denner Dun Deal. And also. Isn't it supposed to be DNA? Or am I being stupid? Dina. 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 What, right. what does it stand for? Denner. D- I don't know. Shouldn't we actually explain what this is before we. No, yeah. no, screw that. Let's just carry on. No, I was doing, I was doing <laughs> the headlines and you've all just <laughs> ra- railroaded me. Anyway, railroad you. You started talking about pronunciation. The it's not the pronunciation podcast. The rest of the uh, <laughs> the rest of the news can just be a surprise. So let's start in this sense. So Nintendo actually kind of came into our century by announcing that they would do <laughs> mobile phone games, but like not actual the proper full games that we've all lo- know and love from Nintendo, but some weird, unyet to be confirmed kind of offshoots of them. So you'll get like Mario, like Endless Runners. Um, is that what they said? Is that confirmed? Well, it's confirmed that they, 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 they didn't say it would be like the Mario game coming. It'll be like a, a variation of that game, but Mario it's, it's will It's basically going to be like mobile games, but with Mario's face on it. Like Candy Crush <laughs> Saga, <laughs> Candy Crush Saga <laughs> with the characters. <laughs> oh, Mario, <laughs> Mario Stump Saga. Because <laughs> uh, well, actually, when they talked about it, didn't they say something about just trying to get it into, get, get Nintendo into, like the characters and stuff into more people rather than I think it's been interesting this because it's it is such a big move but we're talking about a company that has been incredibly incredibly protective of their IP over the years it's not like you they will it's been their kind of like calling card isn't it that Mario Zelda a load of others are all locked to the Nintendo platforms and it's like everyone's gone this is a really big move and it is a really big move but number one we don't really know what they're going to bring it could be just like fringe games it could be anything it, it, it could be it could be completely new IP, it could be whatever. So in a way, it is a really big move, but in a way, it also opens up a lot of questions about, like, they're not going to go nuts. They're not going to... Yeah, I don't, I don't think it really sounds like much, to be honest. I think it's, it's one of those things, as soon as they announce it, everyone thinks, oh, here we go, Nintendo games on, on mobile platforms. That's not what it's going to be at all. It's just going to well, be... I, I, I think it is massive news. I mean, their stock's gone up, like, 30% or something overnight. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's big news, but I think, do you not think that, like... Um, I don't know. People are getting more excited about what it could be when actually it's probably not really going to be that exciting. I, th- I feel like the I feel like they'll just be testing the water to start with. Um, my concern is that they'll see the amount of revenue they can make from in-app purchases and all that nonsense versus releasing a full retail game, and they'll go off down that path of more mobile apps. And I think this 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 quote like it, this actually links to our next story, which is the NX, which is the new console. So I'm not going to go too much into that, but I think Spoilers. this. Yeah, it's hardly a spoiler, is it? It's hardly like, oh, who done it? Well, <laughs> um, Nintendo done it. This is from uh, Satoru Iwata, which you have interviewed. I have, I have interviewed in, in who? The very flesh, yes. He is a man, a very charming He's fellow. He is too. Yes. Mike's interviewed. This is a quote that he said about the about the NX, but also I think this kind of really says a lot about their new direction. Which says the membership service, this new membership service they're launching will include multiple devices and create a connection between Nintendo and each individual consumer regardless of the device that they use. And I think that's basically Nintendo say, right, we know that people want Nintendo content. We know people have got more than one device that's not, that, that, that's not a Nintendo device. We can no longer just go, well, they don't exist, la, 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 we're not listening. We can now maybe go, right, we can be a service provider and actually use our content on those other devices. So and actually, you, that's a really good idea. Do you think you might buy maybe Super Mario Galaxy 3 for the Wii U or the next console, as we'll talk about it in a minute? But then, as part of that, you'll get like a mobile download of some sort of weird Mario in variation theory, or something. Yeah. So you'll get, my, my, my main concern with this is the controls. Like, Mario games are super tight. The controls, like, yeah. you know, they're, they're famous. They're the best platformer for that reason. And mobile phones are shy when it comes to controls. So yeah. I, I don't understand how a Nintendo game, which is relies so much on that like sort of amazing pinpoint accuracy can can work but when it comes thing, to a phone the thing is when you like you look at kind of games like the GTA ports and they were all right the BioShock port as well they were starting to get a bit better possibly this is a fact that because a good benefit for this will be actually Nintendo will so insist on good controls but they'll kind of work out how you do that on a touchscreen device how you play those kind of games and it's got to be possible. I mean, you look at this looks like a gamepad. I'm holding up an iPhone, by the way. I know this is not actually filmed, but I'm holding up an iPhone. You know, you think about there is no reason on a touch basis why that couldn't perform like a gamepad. You don't I get the haptic know. feedback, though, do you? It's just... But I think... I don't but, know. But if you look at kids playing games, possibly these days, they're all playing on tablets and iPhones. Right. And they, you know, they have no problems with touch controls. And I feel like Nintendo's lost a whole generation 
in terms of uh, kids because they're all playing Minecraft these days. Yeah. A lot of them are playing Minecraft on tablets. So they've got no problem at all with the controls. It so probably I just means they'll bring out Animal Crossing on a mobile and everyone will just, like like you say with Minecraft, everyone will just go, oh, now I'm going to play it's Animal got, Crossing it's forever be Pokemon. and ever and ever. They must bring Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Everyone's said about Pokemon for years and, like, you know, or oh, maybe Chin Pokemon. <laughs> I can imagine, like, F Zero, one of those older kind of racing games, that would be quite good because you have yeah. tilt controls. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if they'll do Mario Kart because it might be, if they did it, it'd almost be a reason not to buy the Wii U or something anymore because that's one of the best games on that. Yeah. Or something like F Zero is like safe. I feel it's not it's not a major can, release. Can you imagine how, it's not a how angry the fans would be after years of asking for an F-Zero game, it was a mobile one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would suck. I mean, Christ. But yeah, so suck. I can totally see that happening. Yeah. But I think well, the thing about Nintendo, what they've realised is, you know, look at someone like Apple. And Apple, you know, doesn't make content. It, it provides devices. Whereas Nintendo kind of does both. And you, you're kind of stuck in the middle, aren't you? So you're not getting your content on more platforms. So you're relying on someone to buy a Nintendo platform. And because the Wii U has been so poor, and arguably the Wii, even though it sold by the bucket load, didn't really work in a lot of ways, suddenly your platforms are rubbish. So people are not coming to your shop so they're not, they're not finding your content. Having said that, the new 3DS is the highest cold selling console this week or this month. So well, they're still in there. All right. They're still pretty healthy. But yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. shit all over my argument. Yeah, yeah. Only on handhelds, though. I mean, yeah, the Wii U is still Wii tanking. Use. I don't understand why the Wii U is still so bad. Oh, well, yeah, actually, I do promotion-wise. Kind of over time, it might grow because you'll get the Zelda, you'll get the right Mario, you'll get the right Metroid game, and suddenly like, it's looking more and more favourable for normal, like, you know, the traditional gamers to go and pick it up because it's cheap and it's still got all those great games suddenly. I always think like um, what surprises me about the arguments on terms of like what wins gameplay or hardware all that kind of stuff is that at the moment this generation has proven everything wrong like that because so far PS4's had very minimal uh, sort of exclusives. You've got the Nintendo Wii, which has got incredible exclusives, really. Uh, and then I was also thinking about the PS Vita. Like, everyone's complaining about the PS Vita's got no games, and yet the PS Vita's covered in games, but no one bought that either. Mm. But well, like, the, the most, the, the best argument for that is like this uh, This last month, the number one selling game was uh, Majora's Mask on 3DS, yeah. which is like 15 years old or whatever. And the order, which was obviously the thing we were all thinking would be amazing with the best graphics in the world, was like the seventh best selling game. So it kind of yeah. shows you that, it, yeah. that, yeah, it's kind of changing. Like people aren't demanding of the best graphics. We do want something more. But then that won't stop Call of Duty from selling a bucket load when it comes out later this year. So, you know, eh. Anyway, let's open this up to the Nintendo N. Is it ne Nex? Or NX? N -N -X. What? NX. Yeah. <laughs> Nix. Yeah. So this, um, is, this is the. So this is still showing that. Nintendo are not becoming a mobile content provider. They are very much still a console company, and this is their in development. Nobody knows any details at all. New console. Um, it says it will. Nintendo will be the primary party to operate the new membership service with Dina. So you've still got this Dina, D E A N A, whatever the hell they're called, mobile. So the mobile thing is part of this too, and it's all about guiding, like the club Nintendo, like the people who are. Almost like your PSN, I suppose. They're going to crunch. Because what I want to see from this console, I want to see something that finally unifies your the shop on 3DS, uh, Wii U, even the original Wii, brings all that content into one area. Because you haven't got, there's no one place to go and get all that stuff at the moment. No, You've got to have a different no. device to access to different stores, which is just mad. Well, Nintendo loves selling you the same old games time and time again. So, yeah, yeah. so at the moment, if you bought something digitally oh, like me so I bought a Super Nintendo so I'm actually buying them all over again for the first time round <laughs> wow but, you're so current yeah <laughs> but uh, like on the if you buy something digitally from um, the eShop on the Wii you can't use it on the Wii U can you because there's no unified account yeah, yeah, system yeah. so they yes. They desperately need to pull themselves into the 21st century. They need to pull their socks up. Yeah, they do. Come on, Nintendo, pull your socks up. They're, 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 there's like multiple strategies. I mean, they're, they're realizing they have to go beyond their platforms. Like PlayStation Now, for example, is a good example. I mean, that's available on all smart TVs. Sony's really tried to get those games onto other platforms. It's super expand. laggy, by the way. I've tried it. Yeah, we tried it at CS, didn't we? It was, it was, it was rubbish. It might be uh, good. Maybe, it, it's maybe in it'll beta, be good. though. It's in beta. Now, yeah, isn't it? it's coming to the UK beta a bit. Yeah. But I think if Nintendo can provide a console which brings together the, the portable and the, the home console, it doesn't have to necessarily be you know super, super, super graphics. It's never really been it one. It needs to be HD though. It definitely needs to be HD, but 
I don't think it needs to be ridiculously, you know, uh, competing with, uh, with Xbox. But a good console which combines all those things together and is backed up by basically a kind of Xbox Live, PSN type system that goes beyond the devices. I think they'll have a really good like portfolio of stuff because let's face it, if content's king, Nintendo is still got some great assets and they always sell and they're always quality. You know, Mario, Zelda, blah, blah, blah. So I think I think it's a good move by them. Um, I totally agree. I want, I want a console, a Nintendo console that I can bring in Put on, like somehow it connects to my TV via like a dongle or something, so it's cast to your TV. You can play it on the TV. Yeah. And then when you finish the TV and you're going out to work, or whatever, you can take the console out with you and whack it in your bag, and it's yeah. about as big as a Vita. So and it's the same great. game, it, exactly the same situation. Like you just resume from where you left off on the TV, and that is all I want really. And it's got the back catalogue of the 3DS, the DS, the Game Boy Advance, the bloody Game Boy, the Wii, the GameCube, every literally every console back to the NES. And it's got every game on it, or, you know, as many as they can get the, the license to. And it's just your one kind of Nintendo device. And surely everybody would buy that. And even, I could imagine uh, in that awesome. situation happening, maybe even, like, Apple would go, right, well, we'll buy Nintendo then. Because like, we, want, we want that for yeah, the iPhone. Yeah. Because, like, nowadays, you know, I remember, I remember when I was growing up, it, Nintendo was, you know, it was the either or. So you did your Sega or Nintendo. Now, I wouldn't look at a, a Nintendo console I wouldn't. I, I don't give. I don't really care about the I Wii U. I don't regret getting the Wii U though. It's still a great really? machine. There's still some good games on there. They're just yeah, not. Great. In terms of again, like on that family base, I think what I found find weird about the Nintendo Wii U uh, is that uh, the Wii was very that kind of family based in the sort of lounge, everyone get together playing games. And the Wii U, it's sort of like it's the way the hardware is. It's so focused on single player, yet the games are still very. The Wii was like yeah. in the bottle, though. Uh, yeah. they, never, they were never going to recapture that. It was just like a. No, a I know, thing but I just, I just, I found, I found the gamepad. I think the gamepad thing's brilliant, by the way. I think the fact that you, you know, take it around the house and do whatever, you know, it's great. But yeah, it just, it just felt very. It, it felt like they didn't really know. They didn't go one way or the other. They just, yeah, sort of sat in the middle of it. Well, it was, that taps into also probably the shift in the company, isn't it? Which this, this, this con deal really hints at the fact that someone somewhere has gone actually we need to be a bit bolder with what we're doing and because you know sales are falling we've, they made a loss didn't they last year I think yeah they've been yeah. making losses for like the last yeah. like three four years they've yeah. got to do something different they've got to do something different um, and I think this is a really good example and I'd like to see that console with some good specs under the hood I'd like to see I'd like to see some better quality titles on there as well like it basically needs to re- it needs to be able to to pull off the Wii U games, so in like as it used, they always say like if you're going to go back and replicate it, like you know an old system, it needs to be about three times more powerful than it just to yeah, just yeah, to make yeah. the emulation work or something. But yeah. so it doesn't have to me. It doesn't need to be anything different than the Wii U. It, I think it could get away with those graphics. Nintendo like the third parties are never going to come back to Nintendo now. No. I think unless they happen to somehow get an amazing console that's as powerful as the other co- consoles on there and. It suddenly got a massive user base. I can't. I just can't see the. the, the and I tell you what, also is a massive, massive opportunity for Nintendo HD remasters. I mean, imagine well, they've already started. Yeah, they? you know, yeah. I mean, like there's so much yeah. that they. The could Wind do. Waker's like looks oh, sublime on, on their Wii U. You know, they've got so much stuff that they could remaster. They, they do love a remake as well. Oh, they do love a remake. I'd love to go back and see how many times each Mario and Zelda game has been re-released because they they seem to re-release it on every platform, don't they? Yeah, more or yeah, less. Yeah. Well, but let's, let's do that. Yeah, let's but actually go and see how many times like the original in, Mario has been created. Italian plumber. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, from, not, not really. <laughs> from all the things we've talked about in terms of um, this this new console, I just don't think Nintendo are that forward thinking. Mm. I think they're just going to produce something that's, um, that's that's not half as inspired as the things we've been talking about. Because I remember when the Wii U was announced, like most people thought it was just. Uh, an uh, attachment for the Wii because it, no, was, it was a really confusing so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a really confusing press conference and it was and even then, the NX it, it kind of almost has the same feel about it they've just kind of gone oh there's this other thing yeah whatever <laughs> and then I, just, like <laughs> I just don't trust them to, to help themselves basically I think they're stuck in their ways and even though they're in a lot of trouble I think obviously the mobile thing will help them out financially I think that's probably the way to go but as for a new console I just don't believe They've got another great console in them. Wow, bold, bold. I mean, you know, it's not without possibilities, though, is it? I remember when I was growing up, 
you know, the, the idea of Sega not making consoles anymore would seem like absolutely mad. You know, it's like, wow, surely no way Sega could go. And look at them now, they make third party titles. Like, they don't even do that anymore. Then they uh, just fire everyone, basically. They've got like one tiny studio left or something now. Yeah. I think they've gone mobile. They? Yeah, it's just mobile. Yeah. Uh, the irony. Uh, like, I think but, they might have a few franchises here and there, but that's. Like, yeah, I mean, and a bit of IP kicking about. But, you know, the. the you could, you could easily see, I mean, and this is such a pivotal moment for Nintendo, I think you're right, that this is a pivotal moment where they really, really have to get it right. Because if they don't, you think, well, you, you've you got a lot of content, you've got a lot of IP to go fall back on. But Well, they're like the Disney world of games, aren't they? I mean, they've got yeah. so many characters. You can see them maybe licensing those characters to, like, for films and stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're, and the Pokemon, of course. So it's not like they've got... But still, this feels like... A moment where you either get it right or you pull out of hardware altogether. I mean, that's no one's buying a Nintendo console for the hardware, right? It's, oh, it's all about the games. But that's the so, vehicle, though, isn't it? That's yeah. because like the the vehicle is the exclusive vehicle to to that content. And that's what they've always done. So maybe they will pull out of hardware, but it doesn't sound like it from what from the, this NX announcement. Well, they're obviously building one more machine. Yeah. Right? yeah. So whether or not they'll ever bring another one out after it, 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 it needs to do what I want it to do, really. Otherwise, I'll be very upset. Anyway, wow. should we move on to the next thing? Angry Mike. Yeah, Angry Mike. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is one for you legal types out there who love a bit of talk. Well, actually, the next two are. This is about the death of PlayStation Mobile. So let me just read what it says here. So distribution of content of uh, PlayStation for PlayStation Mobile games will end on July 15th. And the service will be sh- shut down on September 10th. And from that day, and this is the crux of it, users won't be able to re-download any content that they may have already previously purchased. So basically, if you lose your phone or Vita or whatever's got all your PlayStation Mobile stuff on it, that's you're screwed from that point on, you've lost. Yeah. And it goes back to this whole thing with like iTunes. Yeah. You don't own it, <laughs> but you feel like you do, but you actually don't own it. You just kind of yeah, rent yeah. it from them on a long period of time. It's well, you, you crazy. Well, you buy a license, don't you, for a number of devices, but actually, you know, if you wanted to say, uh, gift all that content to someone else you could never do it you could, in the same way you could give like a, a CD or a game to someone else you can't you can't do that with digital content but also I think what's about this is you're kind of because you're storing stuff in the cloud you're at the whim of the person who's operating that stuff aren't you really so you get the convenience but you know also it's like giving your cold collection of games to someone and saying yeah do you, do you mind just having a look after that and then they've moved house or been shot in the face or something well, so, so well, I never understand about this. So in, in the world of music, if I own uh, a vinyl record of, like, Cliff Richards, let's go there. <laughs> and I... Wow. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's a Jimmy Sutton also, comment of the week. We're not supposed to talk about celebrity pe- alleged pedos. Alleged, alleged, alleged. Um, all right, let's pick a different one then. Let's say, uh, let's say the Beatles. Um, safe. Yeah, they're all fairly safe, safe. for now, yeah. 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 <laughs> two, of the, two of them are dead, so, you know. That we know of. I think uh, Paul McCartney might also have died several years ago. He's just kind of oh, reanimated. Well, Robo Cartney. Yeah. Am I allowed to then kind of record that vinyl onto another format for my own personal yeah, pleasure? Of course, yeah. To back it up. Well, no, not legally. Uh, it's copying. Not, no, you, yeah, that was a legal thing. Well, yeah. no, you, you are. Because you, you, you can rip CDs now. There's yeah, no. Yeah, no, but not legally. You can. You can. It came yeah, in a couple, couple of years ago. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it changed yeah, the law. Yeah. Uh, okay. Legally rip CDs. But if I own the Super Nintendo cartridge of Mario Kart, I do not have the similar rights. Why? Why is that? I do. Can I? Can I use that as an emu- on an emulator? Yeah, well, games have always if been very well protected, apart from PC games, which were cracked and pirated to, you know, to hell. Really, I think this this story shows you two things doesn't it it shows you the kind of direction that playstation is looking in with playstation now it believes that streaming or you can eat streaming is probably the way forward doesn't really want to do that kind of model but also i think it shows that yeah just be wary about like investing heavily in those libraries because well, it fits very well back into what we were just said about nintendo yeah. we're buying the same game over and over and over and these are digital games so sure, like the same digital game you could have probably bought about four times in some yeah, cases yeah. on different consoles isn't there a thing on the with Steam that if Steam goes down or ceases trading, you can download all your content? I'm sure there's something in, in that. Like a break. Yeah, there's something yeah. about it in, in the terms. So that suggests that on Steam you own it and don't license it. Then. 
maybe that's maybe that's the case. Yeah, that, is, that is the case with Steam, isn't it? Like you do actually, it's like buying it from a shop. Um, you, you you download the copy and then that's just yours. I mean, that should be the case. I don't understand why they have this right to go. Oh, you know what? We've stopped doing it. You can't have your thing but, anymore. Isn't that because you're storing it in the cloud, though, aren't you? So yeah, but what's the problem with then going? Okay, download this stuff onto your thing. Otherwise, you're going to lose it. I get I get that. But the idea that basically, you know what? We we're turning off our cloud for this and then. What if, what, what if you're know. busy? What if you're busy playing? Uh, yeah, but if, you, if you're busy, then then fine. You're you, out you and lost, about. Yeah, you, you know, you're it, doing yeah. the shopping or. Playing you, okay, how about they? Get, how about they give you some a, a reasonable amount of time? Yeah. <laughs> well, they, I mean, so in this scenario, they have done that, and obviously, PlayStation Mobile. There's probably only six people who care about this, yeah. <laughs> but I'm one of them because I've bought PlayStation Mobile content. But he does yeah. say actually, there's a bit here. It says uh, Vita owners will be able to carry on playing any titles they have already downloaded. However, although they, although they will have to manually activate their handheld, oh, this doesn't this press release doesn't even make any sense. But it says, so Vita will be you'll be able to keep playing the same games on your Vita, but you'll have to manually activate your Vita to be able to do. So you must have to, you know, you can make them your main console for that type of content through the settings or something. You must have to do that. But if you don't do that by September the tenth, you'll lose the content. Yeah. So you can't. So you, yeah. And so you can re-download it. That's key. No, yeah, after the 10th of September, you're, just, which is, you're screwed. Which is kind of sets a worrying precedent because, you know, at some point, in theory, all these PlayStation 4 games we're all buying right now, they're not yeah. going to be around forever. At some point, they're going to turn off the service. In this case, didn't they turn off the original Xbox service? They did, yeah. So, so you, you, you know, you oh, lost wow. a lot. The whole oh. game, the load of games been took off it. I think I had, like... I want to say Counter Strike for the PlayStation, but you can still. And then it, now it's not on the store anymore, and you can't re-download it. You can't re-download it because normally, so I've got stuff on. There's, there's on, something anyway. I've got stuff on the 360 that I downloaded, then for whatever reason it's been taken off the store. But I can still down. I've still got access to it, even though it's been. Oh, because my PS3 brick though, so then I had to reactivate it as the. But because when you basically if you get the yellow light of death on the PS3. It's really hard to make that old PS3 no longer your main PS3 without going through oh, Sony. Yeah, so yeah. that's got all the rights to all the stuff I own. I mean, even though it works still when I've got the new one for most things, there's a few things where it goes, this isn't the authorised PS3. Like, screw you. I don't get that. Why is that a, th why is that a thing? Because I had that when I first bought a PS4, I got it off Amazon Warehouse for cheap, uh, and it didn't oh, work. Yeah. <laughs> But I'd already registered, for registered kid. my uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd already registered my PSN account on it or registered it to me or whatever. So then did you, did you when I sent it back, it? I then I hadn't deactivated oh, it. You're screwed, though. Well, no, I wasn't screwed because <laughs> I could do it online. But I kind of thought, why is this a thing? Why have I got to activate my main PS4? I don't get I, it. I don't understand why it's there. No, uh, it's, it's just it just has been since PS3. This activating it doesn't do it on Xbox. I don't think it's yeah, just like. It but it's also to do with uh, films. When you download the Sony, well, I can't remember what the film service is called on PlayStation Store, but whatever. When you get those, when you get those films, it only works on the on the like the main activated PS3 to stop you from kind of, I suppose, cloning your account on a mate's one and mm. and like you can both watch it and you can both play. It's really I know it's complicated and annoying, but ultimately yeah, it's worrying if this is a precedent that it's Sony's setting. And Sony are actually one of the kind of friends of games it feels like at the moment too. Yeah. And yet they're still doing this. So like, I mean, for like single player games, you probably you've probably already played them, done them, and gone. But for like anything that involves a multiplayer element that you're coming back to, you would have thought like. That's gonna be a real issue, isn't it? I mean, like you know, people. I can remember there was a big thing about Windows XP, wasn't it, a while ago? People, and that was ten years after the uh, the software released, and they they removed all the support, didn't they? The upgrades, the updates, and you know, people were up in arms about, oh my god, I can't believe that. That's ten years later. I don't know when PlayStation Mobile launched, but it can't be ten years, Probably can about it? Five, do you think? Five years. Like. So they've canned it within five years. Some services are going within two years. And I think like it comes back to this thing of like, well, if you're going to launch something like quite significant, you should at least back it up and stick with it. Yeah. You know, uh, and then some there should be a minimum that they have to. Yeah, you know, and then you look that comes back to the Nintendo story. Like they've already got Club Nintendo, they've already got Virtual Console. Now they're launching another membership service. It's like, well, hold on a minute, like. Just pick one thing, they unite need them to, all, Nintendo and just have stop to pissing like, around. Make those accounts converge, or it'll be. But there's no crap. way. There's no way because. No, they won't. Oh, I can guarantee all the stuff I bought on the Wii years ago, I won't be able to get on this no, new you NX system. Absolute guarantee. It. Yeah, there's no way they'll do that, and it will be bodged and it will be a mess, and it always is. It always is because basically somewhere someone's got somewhere someone somewhere has gone. 
oh, this is a bit of a headache. Should we just launch something new? Like, and someone's gone, yes, fucking great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in Japanese, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Could you do it in Japanese, please? No, I'm not going to do... They just said it already. I, I know what you're trying to do there. You're trying to make me do a Japanese accent. I'm not going to do that. No, I want it in Japanese, not with a Japanese I accent. I don't know any Japanese. Uh, apart from Konnichiwa. Arigato. I know uh, Sonu wa doku ni imasuka. Whoa. Ah, is that I look handsome. Cool but maybe I need to say, it's something about like, where are the monkeys? I don't know if it's a, uh, if it's... That yeah, could we're be borderline. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Someone did tell me that, that it, is, it is borderline racist. When, um, so well, hold on, said, you just said something borderline racist in Japanese <laughs> on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that is not representative yeah, of our They've got to get 25 minutes in. It's not really borderline racist, it's just plain racist. No, no, it's not. Who are these people you're hanging out with that are teaching racist Japanese racist? I think we know who they are. My sister lived in Japan for a couple of years, and like I went to this place where they're supposed to be monkeys after the end of the walk. She said, if you don't, if, if you don't um, see any, find someone and just say this to them. I was like, well, yeah, but when they respond, I'll still have absolutely no fucking idea where the monkeys are. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but I, I, I saw someone uh, after that and I said, oh, yes, I can speak some Japanese and did this line. And they said, uh, oh, well, that's actually something about like yeah, where are the yellow monkeys or something, which is actually... Oh, <laughs> what? Why did we let that story happen? <laughs> well, no, yeah, I don't, I, it was, it was unintentional racism. The, the podcast will be good. Oh, <laughs> Dave. Dave. <laughs> All right. right that's, by the way, I, st- I still don't know how directly true all that is because she just told me that and I kind of think, Oh really? I don't have no idea. I haven't. Well, maybe should, maybe should ask in Nintendo. Right? Yeah, for Nintendo. Sure. No one can see Dave for the whole. He's just done for himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come back Christ up. Almighty. Hey, but look how impressed you are when I did that Japanese line. <laughs> yeah, that, it was yeah. the pronunciation looked pretty good. There'll be a yeah. queue of, uh, ch- of uh, Japanese people outside your house. <laughs> yeah. No, they won't because no one listens. They're a very polite nation anyway. Um, I don't say no one listens. <laughs> yeah. How All right. people listen? All right. Hello, All right. internet. This is a good one. This one was raised by Jack. <laughs> so Yay. it's about... So you know it's going to be a good one. Jeff Minter being disgusted. Beyond disgusted. That's disgusted, not disgusting. With yeah. Atari over his game, TXK, being blocked from publication on a number of different computer game systems. And that's basically because it is Tempest, and Atari owned the rights to Tempest. Well, so you say. So a lot of people <laughs> say. <laughs> Yeah. All right, it's not. It, it, well, it's the same game. It's exactly the same premise. It works the same. It's got the same coloured spacecraft. It, it is a weird one because, I, you know, I'm a fan of Jeff Minter and I, I'm always willing to take his side. But this one's a step too far for yeah. me because it just seems bizarre. So his, yeah, he released this game, TXK on the on the Vita, which is, for all intents and purposes, Tempest. As I found that when I downloaded it, I thought, oh yeah, I don't like Tempest. Um, so you just slighted Jeff Minter. He's now beyond disgusted and a bit I, annoyed. No, I was a big fan of uh, Hover Bother on the Commodore 64. That's one of his better oh, games. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't get behind the Tempest, but oh, the, sorry, Tempest, <laughs> not the Tempest. It's very Shakespearean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, it's a weird story, really, because I can totally understand why Atari would not want him to publish effectively too, their, I their game. I sympathise for, for Minter, but like Atari are correct. I don't really understand. He's not really got a leg to stand on. I mean, it's, it's the world we built for ourselves. We're in this like yeah. ridiculous world where big business runs the world. So, but in this world, he doesn't have a leg to stand on because ultimately, it's Atari's game. But that's classic uh, Twitter, isn't it? You know, you can kind of go out there and it, it's a little story, which effectively is kind of like a bit of a, of a, a contract dispute between him and Atari, have suddenly become a news news item. It's two people kind of who've got suddenly one of them has gone. Do you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go out into the into the internet with this. The Twitter sphere. Because you know that's a good way of kind of like highlighting like what it is. But, but as, as I understand it, they released it on Vita, right? But they, he's saying they didn't release it on PC and PlayStation PS4. Four. Yeah. Uh, because of some reason. Well, because they've said it's far too close to their IP, which it is. It'd be like, I was saying this before. It'd be like me writing. The Lord of the Bracelets featuring John Baggins. Oh, and just, uh, I'm pretty sure that are whoever you? like Warner are Brothers you? and the estate of uh, go to Tolkien Cordor, of <laughs> <laughs> Shadows of Cordor, Cordor. <laughs> Shadows of Commodore, Shadows of a Commodore. I'm pretty yeah. sure I'd get like the heavies over to my house pretty soon, and he wouldn't be too happy about me releasing that oh, bestseller. Yeah. So it's really the, the old, same. The All he's done is crew. he's updated the graphics slightly <laughs> and updated a couple of things. Has, has he updated the game. graphics? I'm not sure he has. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so he says it's a bit of HD remake. Uh, yeah. But, but the, the funny thing is, it it's been on the Vita for like about a year, and that's not been a problem apparently. I wonder if Atari even knew. You know, that's the weird thing. What, what, why was that allowed? Another problem for the Vita, and no one knows it exists. Well, exactly, but they've also he's also implied that um, Atari are going to remove it from the PlayStation Store, so 
you, if you want it, get it now. What if you bought it? You well, I, I did buy it. I don't want it, but I've got it. Did you buy it on PlayStation yeah. Mobile? <laughs> I case, did. I'm doubly yeah, pissed off. So. Like, going back to that, <laughs> this, is, this, this whole uh, pub, pub news has been brought to you by Digital Rights, in a way, hasn't yeah, it? But yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah, so if you bought it, do they offer a refund, do you think? I've never known that happened. I, I can guarantee that if you... If you've bought it, they will still let you download it if they remove it from uh, the store. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, maybe. Well, I say I can guarantee it. I can't guarantee it at all, but I would assume. But I think it, the, the thing is about this, isn't it? It's like when there's huge opportunities to publish and there's new routes to market, suddenly things become a little bit messy, don't they, in a lot of ways? You know, in terms of like not only the people who are publishing the games, but the people who are buying the games. You know, it, it, there's. There's more kind of routes to market, and it can become a little bit messy, really, can't it? You know, I don't know. I think I think this, this case is, is exactly one thing. As I understand it, he's taken an old game, repackaged it, put it on the. But a game he might have created, but the game he's created, <laughs> and it, presumably he feels that this is his IP. But as humans, the Atari, they think, well, we published it, so therefore it's our IP. And they but have the right. I assume to it by the original law, I agreement. When was Tempest launched? Uh, 1978. Yeah, or yeah, about I mean, 1920s. You know, there was, there was there was no way they factored in <laughs> 1920s. It's uh, it's got Hitler in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, no way that they uh, they factored in a digital download system at that time. The original contract agreement. So Jeff Mint is such a drama queen. I'm just looking at his tweets here. He says, "I can never I could never imagine one day being savaged by its undead corpse." My own seminal work turned against me. I am beyond disgusted. Beyond <laughs> disgusted. Yeah, so, so, so wow. yeah. This is it, like, so let me do his voice properly. Yeah, it's like so, so yeah, all the stuff we had ready right. are near that's, ready. We'll right, now that's, never that's, see that's, the light of day. Right, that, was, that was too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got headphones on, so I can't hear the outside. That was about 100 decibels too loud. Yeah, mate, that was quite loud. That was his demanding voice. <laughs> he, sounds, he sounds... We can never come back here again. I actually spat all over my desk, though. I was saying it like a child. He spit his lollipop Let me, let me have a quick look. And so, so he's, he's, he writes like a Daily Mail reader. I got my dad into games using a VCS, and on his last ever holiday, I was so happy to be able to show him around the Bunker of Borregas. <laughs> Do you know why I took my dad to the bunker of Borogas? Didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Never spoke again. <laughs> I was there when it died, and that too was a terribly sad time. That's, that's quite sort of melancholy, isn't yeah, it? So I've got a lot of sympathy for him, but ultimately, it's now to be done with it, is there? He needs, you know. Atari's another uh, company in transition. They went pretty much fully digital, didn't they, a while ago now? So I don't know what they do anymore, really. You don't really see it. It's like the digital downloads pub news isn't it there's a real theme it's almost as if we planned it which we didn't <laughs> they, they actually yeah, they launched an Atari service like a it couple did, of years did, ago yeah, but uh, I remember the site didn't work after the, the first launch date and then it seemed to just die a death I think don't Atari mainly do like slot machines these days I don't think oh, we make, I don't yeah, think we make many do, games uh, arcade games don't they most, yeah. mostly I just think this is this, it just seems like a real storm in a teacup doesn't it tempest in a teacup <laughs> oh yes I All find right. the whole thing quite alarming <laughs> oh, nice. hey? Yay. Hey? Lama soft or something. Yeah. 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 I'm sure he'll be. That's a clever joke. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure That's he's still minted out of that game. <laughs> the uh, end point of pub news. Oh, All right. All right. Shall I do it? Yeah. yeah. Do the outro. Don't just drink your drink. No, it's the end. Get... That's the end. Shows that we've. It's the end. My drink's finished. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back. Possibly this time next week, bam, probably, bam, depending on what, how much bam, exciting bam, news bam, happens. Bam, 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 b